Well, CSM 12, I'll be going over a quick uh, walkthrough of lab zero. And at the very end, I will be going over some basic uh, command prompt slash uh, terminal commands that you guys should know for this course. So in this lab, we needed to download the correct version of Python. We needed to download a text editor. Then we needed to write some code in the text file or the text editor that we downloaded it and run it in your terminal or command prompt. I will be using Windows for this walkthrough, uh, but I'll explain what Linux and Mac users should be doing as I go forward. So first, let's download Python. This is a simple Google search, or you can use the link provided on the lab slides. And you're just going to go to the python.org slash downloads button here. Um, and it should, by default, detect what operating system you're on. But in the case this doesn't match, just click on one of these links down here. And you need to download Python 3.11. Um, at least 3.11, uh, the last digit doesn't really matter. Once you click on that, um, it should give you an executable. You're gonna click on that and open it up. Now for Windows users, the most important thing you have to do is click uh, add python.exe to path. This will actually enable you to use it in your uh, command prompt. I apologize if you can hear my cat. But anyways, um, this is only for Windows users. Linux and Mac users don't need to click this. Um, and then we're just gonna click install now. For any user, Mac, Linux, or Windows, do not do any custom installation. We'll just do the very uh, basic Python installation here. So once I click install now, just click yes and just go through the very basic process. Um, you know, just allow yes, um, whatever it may be. Um, I don't know why my cat's going crazy as soon as I started recording. I apologize for that. And a wise man would probably edit this part out, but I don't believe in editing. So we're just going to sit here. As soon as it's done, um, I will show you guys how to verify that Python has been properly installed, <clears throat> which should be shortly. All right, so um, setup was successful. Again, don't do anything here, just click close. And now for Windows users, we're gonna go down here. We're gonna type in CMD and click enter, and it's gonna open up our command prompt. For Mac and Linux users, you will be using your terminal, which, I mean, you can just search for it however you normally search, whether it's the finder or whatever else it may be. You type in terminal, that's how you spell it, and the icon looks like a little black box like this one down here. Once that is open up, Windows users will type in Python dash dash version, and it should display the version of Python we just downloaded. If this doesn't work and you're a Windows user, you can try py dash dash version. Um, if, if PY works and Python doesn't work, that just means your system's commands version of Python is just PY. And every time you hear a professor say, type Python followed by, let's say, some sort of file, you type in PY. They do the same thing, but some systems only accept PY. For Mac users, you would type in Python 3 dash dash version. Now, the reason, in case you're interested, that Mac users need to type Python 3 is because Mac already has Python installed on their computer. However, it is Python 2. Um, and since Python is semantic versioned, that means that Python 2 is not compatible with Python 3. So when you're, whenever you run Python, you need to actually make sure I want to run Python 3, not Python 2. So anyways, now that we've confirmed that, we are going to download our text editor. Uh, just to talk about what the command prompt is versus the text editor. The text editor is where we're going to be writing all of our code. The command prompt is where we are going to be writing or running that code. So text editor writes it, command prompt runs it. So Notepad++ is recommended for Windows users. Again, this is a Google search or you can use the link on the slides. You're going to want to click on the notepad++.org one, click on the current version link on the left here, and then just click it download. Again, you don't want to have any fancy extensions, just say yes, allow, all that stuff. Don't do any custom builds. Uh, the same follows, follows for Mac users with BB Edits. It's the bare bones software link here, and you want to click the free download. You do not want to buy anything. There's no points. Um, and again, no custom builds. Just do the very basic download. Um, now, I will mention um, that... Sorry, my cat's going crazy right now. <laughs> I will mention that I personally recommend Visual Studio Code. Um, it has really powerful extensions, which you guys will use later on in your CS career. But uh, it also looks cool. And it also is uh, operating system um, independent, so it can 
you know, it, like Mac users, Linux users, and Windows users can all use Visual Studio Code. So moving on from that, now that we've downloaded our text editor and the language Python, uh, we're going to open up the text editor. So once you open yours up, uh, sorry about that, it might give you a blank TXT file or it might have some like licensing and setup information on a file. You can just close and delete that licensing and setup information. You don't really need to read that. And go up to file and just click new file or new text file and it will open up an empty text file that might look something like this. Once you have this open, uh, now we, this is where we're going to write all of our code. So for instance, for this specific lab, we wanted to print hello world, which is just this. And as you can see right now, it's just black and white because this is a simple TXT file. It can't be executed as a Python file. So to actually make this a Python file, we need to go to file and to save as, and we want to save this um, to a place we will remember. So I typically will save this into my UTA folder here. So now I know exactly where I'm saving it. And then I'm gonna change it to the actual name. So it's like your GMU ID followed by the lab section number followed by uh, lab zero, I believe. And then the most important part, right now it is a .txt file. We want to make it a .py file. This will automatically convert it to a Python file. So now when I click save, it has changed into the pretty colors that a normal code looks like as well as giving us that Python symbol up here. So now that we've actually saved this file as a Python uh, file, we are going to open up the command prompt or terminal if you're using Mac or Linux. And the thing you want to do here is match your path. So first we need to go to where this file is located in our, in, within your command prompt or terminal and then you know run it. So right now for the command prompt, it will actually show the path for you here. As you can see, I'm in users, nice P, users, nice P. So I need to change my directory to OneDrive, then school, then UTA. Um, for Mac or Linux users, if it's not displaying this current path here, you can run a command called PWD that will print the current working directory. Um, and it will give you the path you're currently in. So you can type PWD, click enter, and it will give you something that looks like this. So you just need to make this match wherever you're going. And all text editors should have something like this near the top where it shows the path of the current file. So to actually get to this file, we need to change directory, cd to those directories. Um, so cd is the same for all operating systems. So it's the same for Mac and Linux. So I'm going to type in cd OneDrive. So change my directory to the OneDrive. And then I'm going to do a backslash school. So we can actually chain, like, chain these into a single command rather than saying cd OneDrive cd school, cd uta, and just chain them all together with a backslash, click enter, and as you can see, our path has been updated to show um, exactly uh, the point where our file is located. To confirm our file is here, Windows users can type in dir, click enter, and it will show the file that we've saved in here. For Mac and Linux users, it's dir is not a command, you'll have to type in ls to list everything else, so ls plus enter, will give you um, something like this. So now how to actually run this? Well, I'm glad you asked. You type in Python or PY, depending on your system, or Python 3 if you're a Mac user, followed by the name of your file. Now, you can type in the first couple of letters, click tab, and it will auto-complete so you don't have to type everything out. When I click enter, it will say, hello world. It will print out what we're printing to screen. So let's say we wanted to give this some capitalization, like the H and the W. And let's say we wanted to add a couple exclamation points or a couple exclamation points. We want to make sure we actually save the file for most text editors. It will have a little dot or an asterisk up here if it's not the most recent uh, saved states of this file, like changes were made. So I'm going to click Control S to save it. So now there's not that dot or asterisk there. I'm going to open this back up. And if I want to recall the most recent commands, I don't need to type this out. I can use the up arrow key to grab it. Click enter, and it now has made the changes that I've saved to this file. So this is the file that we were submitting to. Um, this is all we're really submitting to Blackboard, uh, this PY file. Make sure you name it correctly, because in the future, you will get points taken off. So now I'm just going to quickly go over some basic uh, command, slash, uh, command prompt slash terminal information. So right now, I have my command prompt open here, but I'll just close it real quick and reopen up a new one. And I'm also going to open up Git Bash. Git Bash is just the Windows version of a terminal that is also Unix-based, like the uh, Mac and Linux terminals. So 
uh, I can show both of uh, people or show everybody what I'm exactly what I'm showing here. So I'm just going to split everything up so we can see everything at once. All right. So this is going to be for the Mac and Linux users. This is for the Windows users. And this is just showing what exactly is happening here. So the Linux, the, the Linux, geez, the uh, command prompt slash terminal is essentially just a glorified uh, file explorer here. So for instance, if I was to click on my OneDrive link here or uh, folder here, that is the same thing as saying CD OneDrive for both of these guys here. So now if I was to list out everything in my OneDrive, I would see what is displayed here when I click on OneDrive. So if I was to say dir, you know, I see, you know, my daily planner, desktop documents, all that stuff that's currently here. For Mac and Linux, if I said LS, I would see the same thing. Now, let's say I wanted to go to school, then CS, then let's say CS468. If I wanted to do uh, to do that here again, we can ch we can chain our commands. In most file explorers, you can click up here, and it will show you the exact path we need to travel to in case we forget. But in this case, I just know what it is. So it's school CS and then CS four sixty eight. It is case sensitive, so the CS needs to be capital. And once we're in here again, I can type in ls, and it will show everything I see here. It's going to be the exact same thing for uh, you know uh, Windows users. So school and then CS, and then CS468, all, <clears throat> all very uh, case sensitive. So if I was to type out dir here, I see everything that is shown here. Now let's say I wanted to go back to my OneDrive. How, how do you go backwards in a uh, um, something like this? Well, for both Mac and Linux, you would type in cd dot dot slash dot dot, or sorry, slash dot dot slash dot dot. And now, as you can see, we are back to the OneDrive. Each of these one dots will take you back one. Stop, Tom. Chill out. Chill. Sorry, my cat is just, I don't know why he's like going crazy right now. Um, so um, each of these dots is going to represent one directory level. So saying CD dot dot alone will take you back out of the 468 folder just into the CS folder. Saying another dot dot will take you out of the CS folder into the school folder, and the last dot dot will take you back to the OneDrive. Again, so to get back to the 468 folder, I could do CD school, then CD CS, then CD CS 468, or I could chain them all together like I did up here, or wherever I did it. And same with that. Uh, same with going back to OneDrive, I could say CD dot dot, CD dot dot, CD dot dot, CD dot dot but you can chain them together with the backslashes. Now, all of these commands are the exact same for Mac and Linux, so I'm not gonna do it again. But I think that those are pretty much the most, like what you guys should be comfortable with um, using your terminal and whatnot. Uh, so do let us know if you have any questions.